Welcome to GSP Tea Time, the podcast edition, where we talk about all Girl Scout things. I am Cadet Girl Scout Dorothy Rosario. And I'm Cadet Girl Scout Francine Prades, your host for this IDG podcast series. To celebrate the International Day of the Girl, we launched the first ever podcast series of the Girl Scouts of the Philippines yesterday. And in our pilot episode, we talk about how to discover and pursue our personal advocacy. Kaya naman, to continue the momentum, this time, we are going to talk about how to develop a clear advocacy action plan and how to really implement it with none other than our own Girl Scout Ates slash Tita Logicate. Today on the show, we're excited to introduce two amazing Girl Scouts who are now career women in their respective fields. First, we have Miss Akina Rosalie Siladan, a GSP 80 National Young Achievers Awardee. She is an educator and a group leader from Iloilo Council, where she also serves as a young adult representative to its council board. Through her background as a young adult peer educator of the Action and Body Confidence Program, she has represented the Girl Scouts of the Philippines in the Juliet Lowe Seminar 2019 and the Young Women's Advocacy Forum 2020. Hi, Ate Aki! Thank you so much for being here! Yes, naman! Thank you then sa invite! Hope you are well! Same here, Ate! I hope everybody's doing well here in our podcast series. And of course, we also have here with us Miss Angelica Joy Binyas, a National Outstanding Girl Scout 2020. She's also an educator with a background in community development. She once served as a girl representative of the Manila Council prior to becoming an advocacy champion of the Girl Power Nutrition Program. In 2019, she represented the Girl Scouts of the Philippines in both the Women Deliver Conference in Vancouver, Canada and the Juliet Lowe Seminar in its Africa Hub. Of course, hi Ate Angge! Thank you so much din sa pagpapaunlak sa aming invitasyon. Hello everyone! Grabe, namiss ko kayo. Sending thank- all the love Ate, namiss ko din kayo. Ayan, once again, thank you so much for Ate Aki and Ate Angge for gracing this interview. Today, sobrang excited talaga kami to learn from you on how to create an advocacy plan and how to implement that plan. Pero before we dive deeper into that, we would like to know first po kung ano ba ang inyong advocacy projects and why did you choose to work on that specific cause or issue? Siguro si, A- si Ate Aki po. Um, honestly, uh, share ko na rin no. And I don't know, story time. Pero ito siya. Um, actually, I'm not a Chief Girl Scout medalist. Diba? Um, I think some of you or I think majority sa inyo, diba? Chief Girl Scout uh, medalist or you know, nakapag-Chief Girl Scout na project. So therefore, before doing advocacy, meron na kayong background on uh, community development and all that. Pero ako, in my case, I'm not a Chief Girl Scout medalist. But I had the opportunity when I was cadet and also a senior Girl Scout to do yung AFE, yung peer ed sessions, di ba? Naalala nyo yun, we had or I think we had a master class before. So, um, yun lang talaga yung background ko on advocacy work before. Pero little did I know, na akala ko, like, nagsesession na ako, and yun nga, nag enjoy enjoy lang, and meet with other girls. Pero, um, while somehow na nabigyan ako ng opportunity with the Juliet Lowe Seminar, and also doing uh, advocacies, eventually with the FBM and ABC program, ano na pala yun? Uh, peer ed na pala, I mean, parang part na siya ng advocacy, which is yung awareness and all that. And uh, um, yun din yung opportunity na nakapag-project na rin ako with FBM. Eventually, nung naging tita na ako, like um, being a troop leader in Iloilo Council, so hello dyan sa mga Iloilo Council peeps. So um, I also helped with uh, my girls uh, to have their uh, Chief Girl Scout Medal Scheme project. So medyo nagkaroon na rin ako ng idea on how to do uh, community work with those uh, mentoring sa Chief Girl Scout as a troop leader. And then eventually, nung nag-JLS, kasama ko din si Angge, pero different hub kami. Um, after nung JLS, we were given the opportunity to implement um, a leadership program uh, na parang kina- kinascade namin yung WAGS leadership model through uh, yung sa akin kasi parang nauna ako doon um, 
gumawa ako ng project in my council which is entitled Project Babaylan. So, naging online siya and then eventually, uh, nakipag-team up din ako Sina Angge, Sina Justine, and other uh, GLS scholars through the JLEE conference. And currently, hindi ko pa siya pwedeng ispil, pero parang we have something new with Valuable uh, through my advocacy project with uh, Young Women's Advocacy Forum na kasama ko rin si Erika. So, ayun yung ginagawa ko. So, um... Pinili ko to yung cause, especially yung current kong advocacy work, pero hindi ko pa nga siya ma-share, sorry talaga, pero we have something nice uh, going on. Um, it's about misinformation and body confidence. Kasi ba diba, um, with the ABC program, one of the reasons na, ano ba, uh, one of the reasons na yung girls, they have lower self-esteem, it's because of what we have as false advertising, ba diba? And, um, Konting background lang as well. Dami ko nang sinasabi no pero push lang. <laughs> pero um uh, ano siya, uh, I am uh, currently finishing my master's degree and uh, somehow yung thesis ko has something to do with misinformation. So while I'm formulating this um, brand new advocacy with FBM and ABC through the Young Women's Advocacy Forum, na isip ko na why not na lang do my thesis on something like that, on misinformation, and then gagamitin ko yung nalaman ko sa thesis ko on my advocacy, o ba? Two birds with one stone. So, kaya ganun yung aking um, advocacy right now. So, parang ganun siya. Yan lang. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much, Ate Aki. Na-amaze talaga ako dun sa na-connect niya yung advocacy niya sa thesis niya, o ba? Ikaw naman, Ate Angge, can you share to us kung ano yung advocacy project mo and bakit yun ang napili mong um, work on? Ayun, so, nag-start ako with um, GPN, that is my first advocacy, and I, I work with nutrition and all. Um, sa nutrition, sila yung napili ko kasi parang unconscious ka na siyang napapansin, ganun. Kasi na-realize ko dati na nung nag-chief na ako, nung chief girl scout project ko is about nutrition din, like I taught kids, I taught kids how to um, take care of themselves, how to cook some things and how to um um how to recognize um fake foods with the junk foods and the uh, kung ano pinagkaiba ng junk foods and dun sa mga healthy foods at bakit mas kailangan nating kumain ng healthy foods kaysa dun sa mga um processed and junk foods so yun that is what my project way back in 2014 and then GPN came i think 2019 2018 um and there, I realized, wow, I'm really passionate about nutrition. And then I said, um, siguro kaya ko, or I want to work with this. And so, um, doon nagsimula yung aking advocacy about nutrition. And kaya ko din siguro siya napili kasi I see na, mad- na may mga batang pumapasok sa school na walang almusal, hindi ko makain, or yung hapunan ni agahan, tanghalian, hapunan nila is processed or junk foods or instant foods which is not good for our body and health so yeah that is the first thing na uh, yun yung una kong advocacy inspiring po nun ate Aki and ate Angge I like how you mentioned how it's rooted in your personal experiences kasi ganun naman po talaga yung advocacy no? your deepest hugot is usually the one that turns into your most passionate advocacy and I would like to know, I think for a lot of listeners, gusto din po nilang malaman, what has been your motivation to craft your own project? Siguro po si Ate Angge po na. <laughs> Ayan, sige. Um, ang motivation ko para ma-craft yung project ko is, I think the kids mostly, the kids that I see every every day. And I think the mot- another motivation of mine is that there are no, um, wala silang wala masyadong pumapansin sa nutrition and it's become an underlying problem sa mga sa mga pinapansin nila mga problems and i think um yun yung naging motivation ko to work hard para dun sa mga para sa aking advocacy how about you Aki? <laughs> all right actually to be honest yung kasi para di ba binigyan nyo kami ng uh, briefing before this call. Um, actually, yung first kong sinulat dito with this question is, first of all, wala akong choice 
Kasi, di ba? <laughs> um, it is because uh, I, I attended the YWA. So, we had to really create an advocacy work. So, wala akong choice. Hindi, pero joke lang. Uh, uh, siguro, uh, the reason why tinush ko talaga na misinformation siya, it is uh, because, number one, kasi di ba, yung... Yung YWAF kasi, nangyari siya nung ito na nga, we have the pandemic. So, one of the the key uh, ano ba yun, challenges na siguro na gagawin ko yung advocacy work is hindi tayo makapag-face to face. So, sabi ko, why not create an advocacy project na meron ding uh, something to do with itong online space natin. So, parang naisip ko rin na, oh, okay, so why not na lang na uh, go with false information or fake news or misinformation. Kasi ba diba, aside from the pandemic, according to, yun nga, as I did my thesis and my research, um, it's one of the main problems aside from the pandemic. So, yun nga, yun yung naisip ko. And then, why not ipush ko siya with my, uh, with my uh, advocacy work? And also, um, second, siguro one, what has been my motivation with this is that, ano, um, it's, I think, duty rin natin bilang isang Girl Scout to care because no one else does, di ba? I mean, bakit tayo nagpupush na ginagawa natin to? Ano bang point nito? So parang ganun yung, yung palagi kong iniisip na parang uh, at the end of the day, why do we even care, di ba? Parang, I don't know, if nag make, make sense sa inyo kasi um, yun talaga yung sinulat ko doon din nung nag-JLS kami na nagtanong sila like, Ano ba yung, parang meron, meron kaming activity na why do you want to pursue um, this advocacy or this community work, di ba? So, uh, kasi at the end of the day, iisipin mo rin, bakit mo nga ba ginagawa siya in the first place? So, why did you do it? Because yun nga, bottom line ko talaga is um, care or I care because no one else does. So, yun. Nag-make sense ba yun? <laughs> Pero parang ganun siya sa akin. Yes, Ate Aki, don't worry. Nag-make sense mo talaga and nag-register yung mga words sa sinasabi ninyo. And for me, based dun sa answers nyo ni Ate Angge, it is very interesting to know na ang dami pala nating iba't-ibang motivation behind crafting our own project. No, like for Ate Aki, naisip niya yung current situation natin. We're in a pandemic and very rampant yung misinformation. So she used, uh, she used and she utilized the online space. And for Ate Angge naman, naisip niya na hindi masyado na pag-uusapan, hindi natatakal masyado yung nutrition. Pero kung tiisipin natin, yung motivation talaga natin is all rooted to our passion to make change in this world, di ba? And kagaya nung sinabi ni Ate Aki, it is because we care. And dito sa part na to, um, segue ko na rin siguro yung takeaway ko from Ate Aki kanina, na sinabi niya, even though she did not pursue the Chief Girl Scout Medal Scheme Project, it's not the end of the world. You can still pursue your personal advocacies. And for sure, meron tayo mga listeners dito na baka nag-iisip kung kaya ba nilang i-pursue yung advocacy nila. Wala naman silang background. Girls, just have the motivation. And darating din kayo sa point na magkakaroon na kayo ng courage enough to pursue and to take action on your advocacies. At ngayon, dahil we already learned na how to discover our advocacy in the first episode, Sa episode naman na ito, we want to know kung ano yung mga steps po in planning and implementing your advocacy action plan. So, siguro, let's start ulit with Ate Aki. So, so far, itong um, medyo parang steps na um, in implementing your advocacy action plan, um, naalala ko to when we had um, our session with the Young Women's Advocacy Forum and then meron siyang walo. So, number one is you always state your problem or issue or if uh, naalala nyo rin, if you're into the Chief Girl Scout Medal Scheme Project, di ba, ina-identify yung uh, problem of the community. So, yun, that's one. And then second, kasi nga advocacy work to, you really have to do research, do a lot of readings to back your advocacy. Kasi sometimes, parang nagsasabi lang tayo on a specific issue, like, we must stop this and something like that. Pero wala tayong concrete evidence na nangyayari ba yung issue na yan or feel mo lang, ganun. So, parang ganun yung second step. And then third, of course, uh, state your goal, such as uh, use the SMART objectives, which is specific, measurable, achievable, or sometimes agreed, uh, realistic or relevant and time-bound. So, yung sa objectives naman, uh, you can like have three. Ano talaga yung gagawin mo since you know that that is your advocacy? Anong gusto mong gawin? Kasi um, if you're just gonna talk about one issue like sample, 
ending child marriage. Super broad ng idea. So, hindi mo alam kung saan ka magsa-start. So, having good ob objectives or very um, smart objectives would be helpful. Tapos, number four, you consider your target audience. Sino ba yung target mo with that advocacy? Is it babae lang ba? Girl Scouts lang ba? Would it be meron din bang lalaki? Ano yung age bracket? Um, how old uh, would be your target audience for your advocacy? So, yun, isipin mo rin yun. Tapos, number five, identify your key messages. Ano yung gusto mong malaman ng tao sa advocacy mo? Like, um, example, you want to stop uh, misinformation because yung misinformation, it hurts um, self-esteem and body confidence of girls. Or with GPN, kay Angge, di ba, sabi niya kanina, it has something to do with junk food. So, yung goal niya for that junk foods, or probably yung key message niya would be, uh, junk foods is not good for your health. Because wala siyang nutrition value. So something like that. And then number six, determine your advocacy tools. So yung mga advocacy tools, yung mga activities na, like campaigning, yung mga activities such as nagpapa-webinar ka dyan, or you're doing community work. So andyan yan sa advocacy tools. And also in the advocacy tools, nag a dito yung mga lobbying. Kasi sa advocacy, kailangan ng lobbying or talking with decision makers. And then number seven, uh, you have to also have some media engagement to amplify your advocacy para malaman ng lahat ng tao or ng people in your community na, ah, merong ganun pala dyan, sige, uh, sali tayo. Or um, para medyo nagiging intrigued din sila na, ah, okay, meron palang ganito, sige, ano ba siya about? So parang na nagiging interested yung, din yung mga uh, other people. So with uh, the virtual uh, activities that we have been doing, so it's a great, a really great space uh, to do your advocacy work. Yun, social media or whether rin if uh, meron kayong kilala sa mass media or yun nga, uh, yung mga uh, radio, uh, yung TV, baka naman. Mm -mm, so pwede rin yun. And then finally, um, to check din if uh, nag-work naman yung advocacy nyo, so you should also need to monitor and evaluate your project every now and then. So, yun yung steps na ginagawa ko. Para at least yung walong ito, parang systematic and then you know what to do. So, yun. Ayun. Thank you so much, Ate Aki. I hope yung mga nakikinig sa atin dyan, nagtitake notes kayo kasi it's very comprehensive talaga and it's like a map kung paano i-plan and i-implement yung advocacy projects ninyo. Um, Ate Angge, would you like to add on that? Oo, as in mag add na lang ako kasi hindi yung mga ginawa ko para sa mga projects ko. Ay, para sa project ko sa, ano, um, sa nutrition. Pero, um, let's go naman sa, ano, siguro mga, kunyari, meron ka na nun lahat. Ano nang gagawin mo? Like, kanino mo siya ipapakita? Um, you should, um, consult. Okay, that's very important. Have someone to consult it po. Lagi po tayo magko-consult sa mga adult leaders natin. Troop leaders, um, council, council executives, eh, regional executives, or kanina naman po na mas may authority or mas tingin nyo po na ano na na makatulong sa inyong um, advocacy. And um, katulad ko po, um, nagconsult po kami kay ano kay Tita Rio Jupiter Wala para po dun sa aming project since siya po yung aming counter project manager. And we also consulted with our council executive, Tita Des. Hi, Tita, <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> Ayan. And sino pa ba? We also consulted with our regional executive director, Miss Angie Manalili. Um, yun. So, have um talk. Okay? Makipag-usap po tayo sa mga taong tingin nyo makakatulong sa inyo, sa inyong advocacy. Yun. Thanks, Ate Aki and Ate Angge. Actually, share ko po, this is something that the girls have already been doing when it comes yung mga key decision maker. So, ginawa nila yun sa Activity 1 under sa podcast episode 1. Gumawa sila ng power mapping tool kung saan tinignan nila kung sino yung mga potential decision makers who can support them in their project. And it's nice din po na nabanggit ni Ate Aki yung 8 steps towards realizing your ad advocacy action plan. Kasi hindi naman talaga siya ganun kadali na once you have started um, thinking about an advocacy, may project ka na kaagad at na-implement na yes. siya kaagad. Medyo mahaba habang process siya. And True. Yes, ate Angge, gusto ko yun nag-agree ano, ka din. Kasi, ka-work ko din si Ate Angge sa GPN. So, it's been a long, long journey 
for us in the program in realizing each project. So, ito naman po yung question ko. Um, what are your tips po for Girl Scouts who want to start their own advocacy project? So, Ate Aki? Ay, sige. Pero before doon, uh, i-add ko na rin. Kasi, di ba, yung eight na yun, before ko answer yung question. Yung eight na yun, super structured siya tama. Um, probably may mga girls na alam mo na ang daming iniisip tapos parang okay ayoko na lang kasi oh my gosh it's so many uh, parang ganun <laughs> diba like, yes. pero ako siguro tip lang um, yung walong ito wag nyo siyang isipin na okay gagawin ko lahat ganito parang ano lang siya parang map lang talaga like you know mm. what to do pero not to overthink parang ganun Parang gets nyo ba? Parang kasi mayroong iba na, oh my gosh, parang state the problem pala. Ang daming problema sa Pilipinas. Diyos ko, dadagdag ka pa. Parang ganyan yung vibe niya. Di ba, Angge? Yes. Huwag mo pressure diba? sa sarili mo. So, like, guide mo lang yun kapag na, pag nawawala ka na. Like, ano pa bang pwede kong gawin? Oo. So, parang ganun. So, really, yung first lang talaga, don't really overthink. Yung walong to, as in girls or titas as well, who's also listening, uh, guide lang talaga siya. So, you know, parang at least aware ka lang kung anong gagawin mo. Hindi na ubusin mo lahat. Na, oh my gosh, ano ba to? Chick Girl Scout Medal Scheme Part 2? Ganon ba? Hindi naman. <laughs> Kasi, yun nga, uh, ang daming problema eh. So, parang uh, if you're gonna be overwhelmed, mas stress ka lang. So, parang idea lang talaga siya. Okay, anyways, going back. So, tip siguro, um, number one, and actually na-encounter ko to talaga, especially with the online setup. Number one ko talaga is really select your team properly. Agree ang ge, di ba? I mean, select your team properly in a sense na be inclusive, include everyone, kahit na struggle yung internet, bigyan mo pa rin niya na, ng parang task or if you know that that person is good at something, so go ahead. And then always uh, determine their strengths and weaknesses. Especially this one, kasi yun nga, na, naka-online tayo eh, di ba? Most advocacy work ngayon, nasa online. So, dapat alam din natin kung ano yung kakayahan ng mga kasama natin. And since we are with GSP, understandable talaga, kahit nga siguro si Francine at saka si Doty. Kasi di ba, you're, you're doing your ACADs. And at the end of the day, doing Girl Scouting is volunteer volunteer work, di ba? Alam niyo yan. So, sometimes, baka yung vibe dito is, may ma- mga meron kang team na ang dami-dami nilang ginawa, dinagdagan mo pa yung gawain nila, syempre, ma-stress yan. And then, alam mo na, may mga mental health pro- uh, issues tayo. So, um, we should also determine yung strengths and weaknesses nila. And then, second, be realistic. Yung, isa, isa din yun na tip ko. Kasi sometimes, may meron tayong mga gusto Diba, like sa advocacy natin, like, we want to do like a rally. Pero, diba, isipin nyo like, again, with the pandemic, paano ka magra-rally? Kasi yun nga, yung issue, um, hindi tayo makapag-face-to-face or yun nga, na, na makapag, uh, um, ano ba yun, social gatherings or magkaroon ng gathering. So, uh, be really realistic. And then, um, uh, to the point na if, um, no siguro yung limits natin, especially nga, we have this uh, situation. So really be realistic and make sure na yung mga activities mo or probably yung mga tasks ninyo talagang attainable siya. Kasi imposible din naman na, um, let's say, gagawa kayo ng isang task tapos yung deadline niya bukas na, just ko, wag naman ganun. Pero yun nga, realistic lang talaga. And then finally, uh, naalala ko din yung kay... Um, yung WAG's real experience, yung meaning ng real na relevant, exciting, accessible, and learner-led. So, uh, we should consider this uh, four things uh, when we select yung activities natin. So, yun lang yung sa akin yung tips. Ayun. So, grabe. Very, ano, very agree ako sa mga um, tips ni ate kasi napakahirap magkaroon ng advocacy, especially if you are um fighting against some ano uh, yung problem mo is something that is very big ganun po um kaya yung mga tips ni ate is something that you should um hold on to sa sa anyong advocacy journey yung mga tips ko naman is in slow down kapag ka kapag ka masyado nang mabilis lahat o hindi mo na hindi mo na kinakaya wag kang mag-stop okay wag ka pong mag-stop I slow down lang tayo um, dahan-dahanin lang natin, hindi natin kailangang magmadali. Okay? Take it slow kung hindi mo na kaya. Pero wag ka pong mag-stop. And then, um, 
yeah, pick your partners or pick your team very carefully. Ako hindi ko pinik yung team ko. Napilitan lang ako. Char. Napilitan na ako kay Marie. <laughs> Hi Marie. Hi Marie Rosary. Char. Ayan. So, si Marie po ay aking partner sa aking advocacy. And feeling ko naging mas close kami. Hindi lang talaga. Parang naging mas partner talaga kami sa lahat. Kasi, ano, mas nakilala ko siya deeply sa advocacy journey namin dalawa. And, Feeling ko hindi ko ma-reach or hindi ko matatapos yung advocacy project ko kung wala si Marie or hindi siya yung partner ko. I cannot think of a better partner than Marie. Um, yun, so nakakadalawa na ako. Yung pangatlo ko is um, take space. Sabi nga nila, um, take space po. Kasi minsan may mga tao na nagsasabi na, You're just a girl. Um, hindi, hindi pero hindi lang yung ikaw. Hindi lang ikaw. Hindi ka lang babae. Kundi babae ka. Kaya take space. Kaya ang kaya mo to. And may magagawa kang pagbabago para sa ating bansa. Ayon. Kagaya ng anong kanta di ba? Who run the world, girls? Meron talaga tayong power to make to create a change and to make impact. And natawa ko dun sa sa sinabi ni Ate Angel na about kay Ate Marie kasi na na witness ko talaga personally yung band nilang dalawa kapag may mga um, physical events pa dati and ayun nakakatuwa lang na in girl scouting no hindi lang tayo nagbo-volunteer hindi lang tayo gumagawa ng advocacy works nagpo-form din tayo talaga ng deep and close connection with our sisters with other girl scouts and super agree din talaga ako sa sinabi ni Ate Aki ni Ate Angge hands down sa mga tips ni Ate and personally ako Sobrang bet ko po yung sinabi niyo na don't pressure yourself and slow down. Ito, hindi lang ito nag apply in planning and doing your advocacy project, but actually, it applies in life in general. Kaya girls, huwag niyo masyadong seryosohin. I mean, seryosohin natin syempre ang ating advocacy, pero enjoy, enjoy the journey, and huwag tayong masyadong ma-stress para yung ginagawa natin, ma-enjoy natin siya. Ngayon naman, pinag-uusapan na natin ng mga onting self-care. Ngayon, gusto naman po namin tanungin kung ano yung mga habits, self-care habits and self-care tips na pwede niyong i-share sa ating mga Girl Scout. Kasi alam naman natin, di ba, planning, implementing once on a advocacy project, talagang nakakapagod, nakakadrain. So, paano po kayo nakaka-cope up with stress? Ate Angge? So, Sa wag leadership mindset, meron dong isang mindset na sinasabi yung reflective mindset. Yun yung pinaka-favorite kong mindset as in. Kasi sinasabi doon na um, bago ka magkaroon, bago ka makapag-lead ng ibang tao, kailangan i-lead mo muna yung sarili mo or you need to center yourself. And kaya yun yung pinaka-favorite ko kasi feeling ko yun yung lagi kong nami-miss out tuwing nag-lead ako na parang napoporget ko na i-check yung sarili ko kung kaya ko pa ba ganyan. Um, so, yun, mag-reflect tayo. Sabi doon, kailangan meron kang ginagawa sa five minutes, na five minutes kada isang araw, na something na nakakapag-center ng sarili mo. And inisip ko, ano ba yung ginagawa ko na nakakapag-center sarili ko? Yung nakakatulong na i-gather yung buong pagkatao ko. And I think, ano, hindi ko to na-realize, pero hinahag ko yung dog ko, like for five minutes or longer. Tapos yun, nag- na- Feeling ko bigla ko naiisip, bigla kong na, na pagsasama-sama lahat ng thoughts ko habang nakahaga ko dun sa dog ko. Eh, yun, yun yung isang self-care ko na ginagawa ko sa sarili. And then, um, another one is I clean yung physical ko talagang space, as in yung space ko here. Um, I clean it because when you have a uh, magulong space, minsan hindi ka nakakapag-isip ng, mag- ng mabuti. Kasi magulo din yung isip mo eh. Kapag magulong space mo, magulo din yung isip mo. So have a clean physical space and then you will have a clean ano mentally space, mental space. At saka talk po sa ibang uh, sa ibang tao. Wag wag niyo pong sinasarili yung inyong mga problems kasi kapag ganyan po wala po kayong makakating and hindi mo po masusolusyunan lahat ng ikaw lang. Kaya always talk to your partner, to your team kung meron ka may encounter na problem. How about you Ate Aki? Uh, agree ako dun sa ano clean up your space. Ako share ko lang din and probably some girls could also do it. Um before I head to work kasi yung bahay namin like yung ate ko ngayon wala siya ngayon sa kwarto sa sa 
Iloilo. So she's working somewhere else. So parang yung ginawa ko is sinepar- uh, separated yung workspace ko with my ano, with my room. So parang yung ginagawa ko, parang kini-clean ko muna yung room ko before I head to um my office space. So um bef- uh, when when I wake up, um minimake ko yung bed ko. So siguro kasi meron akong nabasa before na um to have kuno to have daw yon nag nag ano na ako nagiligay noon okay going back <laughs> uh, uh ano daw yung sabi niya is that um to have a good day daw or you know to start your day right uh, make your bed oh so before ako like before honestly hindi ako nagme-make ng bed ko pero you know adulting things um yun yung pina-follow ko ngayon kasi pag hindi ko na make yung bed ko Um, ano siya, parang I don't feel good. So yun, isa yun sa mga parts na, or isa yun sa mga way ko na parang maganda yung mood ko the whole day. Kasi one time, like, I was invited for a, ano ba yun, parang ABC session ata with Aklan Council. So shout out dyan sa mga Aklan. Hello, thank you Bef- uh, sa invite nyo before. Kasi sabi nila, like, parang maganda yung, ano ko, yung pag-gising uh, ko sa umaga. Tapos sabi nila, ate, grabe yung energy mo. Really? Parang hindi ko rin na-send. So sabi ko, ah talaga? Parang okay lang naman yung ano ko, yung, yung mood ko. Siguro it's one of the factors. And then, adulting na rin, um, siguro invest in a good bed sheet. Oo, kasi parang yung ate ko, sinabi niya rin sa akin na ngayon daw na parang tumanda na siya. Char! Parang ang grabe, mas matanda siya sa akin. No? Pero like, she's like, mga two years older sa akin. Sabi niya, invest daw in good um, bed sheets. So parang hindi rin ako naniwala sa kanya. Just, oh, ano, ano yung relate ng bed sheets sa ano? Kasi yung, yung sabi niya pala, um, di ba, your bed is like a space na to rest. So if you have a good bed or like bed sheet siguro or ano, di ba yung bed, bed sheets, especially pag mapango siya or like, you know, it's smooth. I don't know. <laughs> parang mm. ganun. Di ba? Yeah. So parang it contributes daw to better sleep. So recently, parang umuwi siya galing Australia. Um, bumili siya doon ng ano, ng bed sheet. Tapos tinry ko yung bed sheet. Gosh, like, ang ganda ng ano ko, ng, ng, ng tulog ko. Like, even though mga konti lang yung hours of sleep, pero having a good bed sheet daw could contribute to better sleep. Hindi ko alam, pero ako lang ba yun? Or anyone, or a- any sa inyo, like, Agree ba doon? I agree, <laughs> agree de. Ah. Agree po. Oh, oh. Super agree. Oo, oh, 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 diba? I don't know lang. Pero parang gani, invest daw in good veggies. Baka after ng podcast, okay, sabi ni Ate Aki, bili tayo ng veggies. Diyos ko na. Huwag na. Online shop. Diba? Add to cart na. <laughs> oh, add to cart na. Oo. Oh, oh. Pero syempre, of course, girls, Girl Scout is thrifty ha. Baka, you know, nag-spurge tayo. Diyos ko na. Ako pa yung rason. <laughs> <laughs> aside doon grabe dami ko lang sinabi no pero aside doon siguro connecting with friends um, even though social media lang yan okay lang yan as in tapos siguro ako din kasi parang homebody din ako eh, gusto ko lang magstay sa bahay so I read books uh, from time to time if I have that time and then um, sometimes gamer din ako so naglalaro ako ng video games that just to really really stress kasi teacher kaming dalawa ni Angge so you know the stress of uh, online class and all I think nag-agree si Angge sa akin so grabe talaga yung stress niya the whole day so sometimes naglalaro ako ng games like Animal Crossing sometimes may mga ano din may mga Ano bang tawag doon? FPS or First Person, person Shooting Game. So, uh, ginagawa ko yung just to really release stress. Tapos, um, recently din, nung tinatapos ko yung thesis ko, uh, hindi nagpa-function yung brain ko kapag hindi ako naliligo. So, um, yung ginagawa ko is that uh, once na hindi na talaga siya, okay, parang hindi na ako makakapagsulat or hindi na ako makakapag-think clearly, naliligo ako in a sense na, um, yun nga, Uh, probably while taking a bath, nag-listen ako sa music, kung ano pa yung music, like K-pop or Filipino pop or whatever, basta music, ganun. And then, yun nga, then after, parang I feel refreshed, and then, okay, back to work na ulit. And then, also, ano pa ba? Exercise din, sometimes, and then, finally, kasi online lahat, so, nanonood ng movies or series, kahit ano lang. So, parang ganun yung mga coping. Kung ang dami kong coping, ano no, pero, 
Kasi dami ko din niya nagawa. Eh. Kapag mas My stress, work, mas daming coping te. O oh, diba? <laughs> Alam niyo talaga na stress si at si Aki kasi ang dami kong ginagawa. <laughs> Or baka ano, eto na lang yung ginagawa ko, hindi na ako nag-work. Hindi naman. <laughs> Pero yun nga, dami ko lang coping kasi yun nga, dami rin tayong ginagawa, you know. Yun, yun na sa akin. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ate. O, ayan na, sa ating mga tagapakinig, ilista nyo na lahat ng mga coping mechanisms ni Ate Aki. <laughs> sa mga laging stress dyan. Pero, seryoso po, lagi, sobrang nakarelate talaga sa ako doon sa bedsheet na, na minention nyo, Ate. Kasi recently lang, yung mami ko po kasi, bumili siya ng tatlong kama. Tapos, every week na lang, may Shopee dito. Laging may bedsheet na delivery. Nasok talaga ako. Sabi ko, maanong ginagawa mo? Kasi sabi niya, simula daw po kasi nang bumili siya ng magandang bed, pati magandang bedsheet. Ayun nga daw, nababawasan daw yung stress niya sa amin, magkakapatid, ganyan. So, parang napansin ko rin po sa kanya talaga na sobrang nakatulong yan. So, girls, take note yung sa bedsheet talaga. <laughs> Pero seryoso po, I, I love lahat ng mga tips, mga habits na share nyo. And isa pa dito, eto seryoso na talaga, yung na-mention ni Ate Aki ni Ate Angge about sa reflective mindset na tama talaga yon hindi ka pwedeng mag-pour out from an empty cup, di ba? Kaya you need to fill yourself up and be sure to allot time for yourself. So ayun girls, ating mga aspiring um, advocates dyan, huwag niyong kakalimutan na part ng pagiging advocate, part ng pagiging leader is pagte-take care din sa sarili natin. Kasi hindi natin makaka- hindi tayo makakapag-lead ng other people if we cannot lead ourselves. Hindi tayo pwedeng hindi tayo makakakilos ng maayos if physically, mentally hindi tayo okay, hindi tayo may wala tayong energy and we don't feel well. So that brings us to our to the end of our episode. Thank you so much po ulit, Ate Aki and Ate Angge for sharing your rich insights. Sobrang personally, ang dami ko pong natutunan sa inyo. And a short recap lang on what we talked about. So, ayan. Kanina, we asked them kung ano yung mga advocacy projects nila and ano yung mga specific cause and issue na talagang um, kinuperson nila and for Ate Aki is on body confidence and the, its relationship to misinformation and with Ate Angge naman, it's on nutrition. And then they also share their motivation in crafting their own project. They have their own reasons. But it is root, rooted on our um, passion and our purpose to create a meaning in this world. And they also share the steps in planning and implementing their advocacy action plans. Kanina nag-share sila ng very comprehensive list kung paano pinaplan and ini-implement. Pero they also said na hindi mo kailangan stress yung self mo to follow, to strictly follow this list. Tapos, we also talked about the tips nila for the Girl Scouts who want to start their own advocacy project. So kanina, both of them, they said to select your team properly, to be inclusive, to make sure that you're including girls who have skill sets in different fields and to be realistic and to have real experience and to enjoy the journey, of course. And syempre, pinag-usapan din natin ang aking favorite, the self-care habits and self-care tips. Siner nila sa atin. Ayon, thank you so much for once again to our guests, Ate Angge and Ate Aki, for sharing your valuable insights here on the second episode of our IDG podcast series. We hope that this conversation resonated with you girls and that it brought value to your personal perspective. Our next and last episode, we're finally going to feature a group of Girl Scouts who have made a significant impact in their community. So please stay tuned for that. Until then, I'm Cadet Girl Scout Francine Prades. And I am Cadet Girl Scout Dorothy Rosario. We'll see you again soon.